Okay, this is the special right triangles worksheet. And these will be given to you in your graduation test. Here they are. This one and this one. There's two to know. And they are the 45, 45, 90. And the 30, 60, 90 triangles. And the, the whole story here is that if I have one of these special right triangles, then I know that the ratio of the sides is a special fixed ratio. And what they're trying to tell you here, and probably not the clearest terms, what they're trying to tell you is that um, this ratio, they're trying to give you the ratio, I guess is what I should say. So they're trying to give you what the ratio is between the sides. So hang on to that for a second and let's, let's try it. So my first problem, I'm um, being asked to find B and A, and this is gonna be a 45. And I know that my missing angle must be 45. Uh, the reason for that is that my angles inside of a triangle must add to 180. So this is 90, this is 45, so the leftover is 45. And the next step is kind of tough. I like to draw, kind of draw my reference triangle here. By reference, I just mean the one that shows up on the formula sheet. So let me draw that briefly. So this is x, this is x, <clears throat> this is 45, and this is x root 2. Okay, and now I like to compare this to the triangle I'm given. So I'm actually gonna draw this triangle that I was given a little bit differently. I'm just gonna rotate it so I can really see what's happening here. So what I see here is that the long side is a, one side is two root two, and the missing side is, is b, and the angle is 45. Okay. So now, this next step, try to follow this carefully. It's easy, to, it's easy to make mistakes on this. So these two sides, they kind of match, right? These are the matching equivalent sides. So what I can do, because they, they match, I can equate or make equal the two side lengths. So I can say x is equal to two square root two. Okay, so now I have a value for x. And because I have a value for x, I can use that. And wherever I see an x, that's, that has to be the side length. So notice that b and x line up here, and I know that x is this. So b, this side, must be 2 root 2. OK, that's not too crazy. Now, to find this side, I'm going to plug in the value I know for x. So I know that a is x root 2. So a equals x root two, and I know that x is this, so I can write two root two times two. So I've taken x root two, and wherever I saw an x, I plugged in two root two, because that, that is x, okay? So x is gone, I just have numbers, that's great. I made a mistake, I should have written root two here, I apologize, so it's, and the reason is that this is x root two, and I plugged in two root two. So two root two times root two. So you may know what this is already, but if not, you can grab your calculator. You can type in two root two times root two, and we should get four. And that is the answer, okay? So our long side is equal to four. If you feel shaky on this, watch this part of the video again. I'm gonna make sure you understand why I'm doing each step, okay? All right, so we solved number one. Number two says, now, well, this is some kind of problem. We're supposed to find u and v, u and v. So this is a 30, 60, 90. So I'll grab my formula sheet again. It's gonna be like this one. And like before, I will copy that right triangle. So here's the right triangle. Okay, we got 30 down here, right angle over here. x root three, x, two x. Okay. And now I'm just going to compare these side by side here. All right, so I see, I see that this side corresponds to this side. And this is this one side I know. These are just variables. I know this side though. So because these two sides are the same, or you know they, they are the same side of the triangle, I can say that x is equal to 2. So I've just equated or made equal the two sides, just like before. So now I know that if x is 2, and that these sides must match, I can say that u is equal to 2x, which I just made those two sides match, and x is 2, so I can say it's 2 times 2, right? So I've just swapped out my x for a 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, so u is 4. And now to find v, 
So I can equate you know, this side and this side. I can say those sides must be the same. So this is x root three, which equals two root three because x is just two. And there we go. So that's actually both answers. That wasn't, that wasn't too bad. Okay, let's look at number three. So in number three, I have a 30, 60, 90 again, and now I'm not even gonna draw it. I would advise, well, it's up to you. On your test, you could probably look at this and look at this and try to uh, make sure you know which sides match. If this is confusing though, you could draw it again, but draw it facing the same way as this one. But let's try it here. So I see that, I see that my long side, which is corresponds to this long side, right? this long side, this long side, this is 16, so 16 equals, and it matches this long side, so it must equal 2x, right? So I've just equated this side with that side, because they are the corresponding sides. They're both the long sides, they're both the, the hypotenuse, the long side. So to solve for x, I'm gonna divide both sides by two, and I get x equals eight already, so that's not too bad. And now that I know x equals eight, I can find our missing sides. <clears throat> so y is my short side. So see how y is my short side here? It's next to the 60 degree angle. So that must correspond to this x. Okay, so I know that on my reference triangle here, that if this is 2x, that's just x. So here I can say that y, this is gonna get a little confusing, this y is equal to x, and I know that x is just eight. Okay, so x is eight, no problem. I found the um, y is eight, there we go. That's confusing, yeah, this is, uh, the reason this problem is confusing is because they labeled in the problem, this is kind of bad, and they labeled these as x and y. I kind of wish they were just blank. Um, let's do that actually, because the thing is there's x's over here and there's x's over here and the x's here don't match the x's there. Um, so let's just talk about solving for sides. So this side is gonna be eight. It's the short side, we'll call it the short side, because x is just eight, and that's the short side. And the long side here, the long side, the one that has the, the 30 degree angle on it, this one, it says x root three. So the long side is, you know, it's x root three. And I know that x is just eight, so this is gonna be eight root three. Okay, so eight root three is the length of my long side. Okay. Number four, number four, so this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find x and y, these two sides. Again, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna find these sides. These variables are gonna confuse you. So let's forget about them for now. So here, let's match up these triangles here. Notice that the long side of this triangle matches up with the long side of this triangle. These are the same side. So I can write four, which is the length of this side, is equal to x root two. Okay, and now I wanna solve for x, so I'll divide both sides by root two. These cancel, I have x equals, and four over root two, um, we'll just rely on the calculator for now. Four over root two is two root two, okay? And that is our final answer, so x equals two root two. Notice that on this guy, these sides are both x, we just solve for x, so these, both of these missing sides must be equal to two square root two. Okay, number five. This is a nice, a little bit tougher one. It says, using the diagram below, what is the length of z? What is the length of z? So I see, I see over here, well, there's really, there's three triangles, first of all. There's the big one, there's this guy, and there's this guy. So to find z, I'm just gonna deal with this. I'm gonna try to just deal with this triangle over here. And notice that this is a right angle. So if this is a right angle, I know that this has to be a right angle. The reason for that is on your formula sheet down here, complementary and supplementary. Anyway, so this is a 45, 45, 90. Okay, and the long side, the long side is equal to nine root two. So just like over here, it's gonna correspond to this guy. So I can say that nine root two, which is my long side of this triangle, is equal to x root two, which is my long side of this triangle. And now, just like, oops, just like always, my job is to solve for x, so I'll divide both sides by root two. This is kind of cool, these cancel, and these cancel, actually. So I get x equals just nine. And notice that x over here corresponds to z over here, which is what we're looking for. So z must equal nine. So the answer to that must be a. 
Number six says, if the hypotenuse of a 30-60-90 triangle is 15 feet long, what is the length of the triangle's shortest side? So for this guy, we gotta draw a picture. So it says 30-60-90. So here's a 30-60-90. This is the smaller angle, so it must be the 30. Okay. And it says that the hypotenuse is 15. And it says, what is the length of the shortest side? So the shortest side is the side that's opposed or opposite from the smallest angle, so it must be this side, okay? So I'll use my special right triangle again. So here it is, and notice that the side that says 2x, you know, lines up or corresponds with the side that says 15. So what I can do is I can say 15 is equal to 2x, okay? Now to get x alone, I'll divide both sides by 2 and I'll get x equals 15 over 2. You can put that under your calculator and you'll get 7.5. All right, so let's see if that matches our answers here. And there you go, it matches answer choice D. They didn't even put it into a decimal. So 15 over 2 is great. So the answer choice must be, it must be D. Okay, one to go. This problem says, this diagram shows a square tile with a diagonal length of 16 inches. What is the approximate area of the square tile? So this problem might look tough at first. You gotta know a couple things. So the first thing to, to know or to figure out, I guess, is that if we have a square, or we have a square, and we draw what's called a diagonal. So a diagonal is just a line that goes from one corner to the other corner. And I guess the, the unique thing here is that this diagonal is gonna cut my angle right in half. Okay, so you just let's accept that if I draw a diagonal that my angle over here is cut right in half. So remember that all the angles on a square are 90. So if I cut a 90 degree angle in half, I get 45, right? And this is important. <clears throat> it's important because this is now a special right triangle. And that's kind of the whole point, I guess. So they're asking us for area. So we know the area of a rectangle or a square is area equals base times height, okay? So we don't know the base or the height now, but we need to find these two, okay? And I know that this side is 16. So what I have here is a special right triangle. It matches this special right triangle, right? And which sides line up? This side, which is x root two, and this side, which is 16. So I can say 16 equals x root two. Okay, so now my job, now my whole job is to divide both sides by root two. These cancel. I can use my calculator here if I'd like. I'll like do 16 divided by the square root of two, which gives me eight root two. So x equals eight root two. Am I done? No, I just found the side length. So I found the, let me get this out of the way here. I found that this side is eight root two. Remember that squares, on a square, all the sides are the same, so they both must be eight root two. So my base is eight root two. My height is eight root two. So to find my area, I'll just say area equals eight root two times eight root two. Alrighty. So now let's do, uh, you can do this in your head, there's a few ways to do it, but calculator is a great choice. So eight root two times eight root two equals 128. All right, so that is an answer that we can use. Let's have a look. There you go. And it's answer choice. It's answer choice B.